they're closing theaters nationwide. They are closing theaters. Um, I talked about this on the on the the early show this week. The bonus content that I promised the listeners after the Rocky episode failed. Mm-hmm. Um, R.I.P. And R. I. Uh, and so of course the news then was that Cinemark, the owner of Regal, was closing all the Regal um, theaters nationwide. And mm-hmm. you know, I again I talked about this fairly recently, so we don't have to like get into it. But you know, it, it does affect. It, it's, it is another thing that's going to affect the box office numbers. I don't even think we should really, you know, I don't think anyone should really pay much attention to those this year. And, and mostly because one of the reasons they did it is because nothing is getting released, released anymore. That, that, yeah. that was a reaction to, to MGM universal pushing back uh, the bond movie. Yeah. And I guess they had all met before the, the theaters had been like, okay, w- we can still, we can still make it out of this because we've got bond coming in November, but if yeah. they move that, we're kind of screwed. And then they moved it and they're like, okay, yeah, we have to yeah. liquidate all the theaters and fire all these people. And then today they announced that uh, Dune is going to be delayed till next year. Dune was going to come out December 18th. Yeah. And I guess I think... no one considered that, you know, 2020 because it fiscally it was probably going to perform mostly in, in the 2021. I don't know. Sure. Well, but, so so that's Warner Brothers, yeah. and so is Tenet, right? Yeah. So so undoubtedly they're looking at the Tenet numbers and saying, ah, oh, yeah, we, we we can't release this now. Yeah. And I think that's the same thing. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, last I heard, Wonder Woman was supposed to come out in December, and and I'm sure like they've already made like the grand announcement, like only in theaters, Wonder Woman, 1984. Right. So like they'll either like you know, go back on that deal and release it, you know, streaming or, or they'll just wait and like push it back. And I, I would imagine Warner brothers is going to push it back. Cause that's also WB. So like, that's the weird thing is it's kind of like the dominoes fall because like once one of them decides to push back, then they all start pushing back. And bond was one of the first ones to get pushed back. It was like, a very early casualty of, of COVID where it was like, I think it was due out in like March or April. Yeah. And, and it was like that and a quiet place too, which was, re- which was supposed to come out like, a you know, like a week into yeah, the quarantine. It, it was about to, it was about to premiere that yeah, week. And, and they pushed both of them back. And, uh, and I remember thinking then like, ah, oh, come on, they will be back to normal by, by November for bond. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and then, and then like a few weeks went by and I was like, Oh, Oh, Oh no, <laughs> oh, I don't no. think so. <laughs> no. I don't think we will. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, I was just kind of waiting for that to happen. Like you just know, eventually at some point it, it's just not going to work out. It, it isn't. And, uh, I mean, even I was like, Oh, they're not pushing black widow back. So maybe we're mm-hmm. good. And then when they pushed that, I was like, Oh, you know, and, and now of yeah. course that was pushed to November and now they're pushing it yeah. back to, to next summer. And I think everyone is now just banking. The only person, the only studio that's gotten this right so far is universal pushing back F nine. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and now, you know, I think everyone is banking on next summer, like hopefully by then we've got a vaccine or we got enough people vaccinated or we've got a better way to show theaters to, to social distance in theaters. But, yeah. but at that point, everyone's just like, you know what, we're, we're kind of just done um, with the 2020 year and we have to regroup and focus on making next year profitable or we're yeah. really screwed. You know, this might be a conversation, like a different conversation, like for, for a longer form kind of a thing. Um, and maybe with, people who are maybe more knowledgeable than I am, but, but, um, do you think that the theaters will come back in any significant way or, or that they'll, uh, in terms of like how they were, or that they'll have to readjust? Because I feel like, like what we've grown up with and what we have experienced over the last few years, especially has to change and it has to be altered. The problem is the studios don't see it that way. Like the studios have no, they have no reason. And especially now as like VOD is taking off, they have no reason to say, Hey, we got to look out for the theaters. Cause that's where we exhibit. Right. So they're going to get greedy and they're going to say, look, we can do this virtually. So there's no reason for you, for us to take care of you. And meanwhile, the theaters are going to say, we have to change our business model in order to, you know, work with the studios who don't want to work with us 
and then the business model has to completely change. And, and, and I just foresee like, like, I don't know when Regal comes back, because that, that's what this is, is like, we're closing down temporarily to be reopened at some time in the future. We don't know when. And, um, but I just cannot imagine them coming back and it being just how it was. I, I think things have to change. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, 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 I don't want to say I've long believed cause it hasn't been sure. long, but I, yeah. I am of the belief that this was all going to happen. Like theaters were going to yeah. close gradually. Now they've closed dramatically quickly because of everything that's going, because nobody, it's not just like a slow lack of interest in the theater experience as, as the status quo. It is yeah. we You can't go to theaters. There's nothing to see. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, so that is accelerated and it has not given them enough time to think of an alternative or to build up their existing business right. model. And so of course now you have all these massive closures, mass layoffs and AMC isn't closing, but their stock dropped, like, dropped like 10 points or 10% something, something huge yeah. it dropped yeah. because, well, geez, what are they worth now? Because if theaters are starting to close, they're not, they're not worth any, right. any money exactly. and, and, and uh, or any stock. And um, I, I think that, I don't think we'll come back full blast how we were. I think we come back and, you know, because it just, it, would, it probably would just cost so much to even buy back, buy up all those properties again. And you're better off just pick strategically going, okay, we're going to come back, but we're going to have to build from the ground up. And if we're going to build from the ground up, why don't we focus on this amount of screens? Let's put some food in there. Let's get a bar in there. Let's, let's, let's liven up this experience because if we're going to make this investment worth it, we have to diversify our business yep. model. And the example I pointed out in the, in the podcast was, um, like a theater that had a restaurant in it where you could yeah. go dine in before you go into the movie or you could just dine sure. there and not see a movie. But then sure. I thought, well, that's a pretty thin margin too. Maybe that's not the best example of a, of a right. business that would thrive during a pandemic. But, but, but the idea is still there, which is these, the theater experience can still be the theater experience in terms of seeing a movie with a crowd, but the, the, the building, the real estate that's going to house a theater has got to be, diversified um because as we've seen i mean it was already dying a slow death because people were the experience is less special so you got to make it more special to the common yeah. moviegoer and especially because people just have less walking around money in yeah. general and and i would agree i think it's such a weird situation because there's no other business like like if you look back at like circuit city you know before they went went under it's like there's no other business where a a you, like an entire uh, an entire grouping of of products is being kind of pushed out like that 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 market doesn't work the the business model doesn't work so I don't know let's put ice cream in it you know what I mean <laughs> like imagine if Best Buy is like we fell on hard times so now we serve meals here yeah like that's such a weird concept but with the with the movie theater like that's a logical step but it's still illogical I think to some theater owners to say like, I'm not in, I'm not in the restaurant business. You know what I mean? Like for them to, for them to just like concede and say this business that I thought I had, which was movies because I love movies. Now I have to be a restaurant too, in order to compete. It's yeah. such a strange world to be in. But, um, but yeah, you're right. Like you have to make it an experience. And for too long, and I, I'd say, especially in the last, you know, 20 years, the theater has been largely disposable. It's, it, it's, you know, uh, it's run by people who don't quite know what they're doing or don't take pride in it anyway. And as digital took over from film, um, now it's all automated to the point where you oftentimes don't even have a projectionist there. Yeah. Um, like a projectionist comes in, sets the shows and leaves and, and, and there's not somebody there who can like fix things on the fly. And, um, and that, that just, I think, takes away from the experience. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you do other than put in food or a bar or, I don't know, like some sort of weird retail thing or like whatever you do. But essentially, it's making it a different business. We just also happen to have movies. And that's really weird, but that's kind of the way it's going to have to go. And and another thing is like you had mentioned the screens. Yeah, I think I think the multiplex will die. I think I think the 18 screen deal is going to go away yeah. and and like 3 or 4 is your sweet spot where you can you can have you know you can have 
enough to, like you can screen enough to make money, yeah. but you're not screening to empty audiences either. Because that's the other thing is like you think about like these theaters that are open from like nine AM to eleven PM yeah. and 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 how many screenings during the day are empty or yeah. have like one person. And and if you were to change that and say, okay, look, even the big movies like Avengers, we're gonna put Avengers and uh, on the rotation and we're mm. going to screen it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. And it's all, it's all like after you get off work times, Yeah, you know, it, it's not like, you know, 9am Yeah, because, because no one's going to come see it, even Avengers. Right. And, and, and even if they were, why not, like, why not take the, the people who would have seen it at 9am and say, sorry, you have to see it at 7pm with everybody else. Yeah. And then it's like a packed house every every night because there's fewer offerings. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think there's gotta be some, some change to the business model because at least then, like if they're not doing a, a 9 a.m. show, then they're not, they don't have to pay those utilities. Like the, the theater could like the theater could literally open at five yeah. and close at 11. Th- that saves you on staffing. That saves you on utilities. That saves so much wear and tear on your projectors and your uh, speakers and everything. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but yeah, I mean, the, the truth is, I mean, things have to change. And, and I think, um, you, you and I were talking off mic, what COVID has done is reveal problems rather than necessarily create them. Cause, yeah. Um, and, and maybe it has caused some, but, but it's certainly revealing problems. I'd say it's accelerated an existing yeah, problem. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it didn't, the theaters wouldn't have died this way. It wasn't like everyone was going to stop going to the movies, but it was right. the most dramatic worst case scenario. Like when you think about, Oh, Hey guys, by the way, the theaters are dying a slow death. Well, it's not like everyone's going to stop coming to the movies for several months and then right. that's exactly what happened but it, yeah. it, it's not like it would have it's a it's a freak accident you know yeah yeah um yeah but, i mean I, I can only think like if, if things had progressed normally if if covid d- did not exist yeah. um i i would have at least by this point i would have been to the theaters you know five or six times mm-hmm. but i've been zero times I think I think, I think we were reaching a we were reaching a nexus of of all this culminating because you had like you mentioned these long hours that the theater is open but we were i keep thinking like what were we into like what was going on it's because it's hard for me to even remember in the same year that happened but what was our big thing what what was our our telltale sign of excess Mm. as as an as american you know industry what what was it and it was it was we're going to opening weekend now includes Thursdays and in some cases Wednesday night at midnight. And it's like, yeah. that's what, what was going to keep happening. It was, we've got to make more money at the theaters. And so if, if, if the theater is, if we're going to even put our film in theaters, the theaters need to like show this thing like midweek to count towards yeah. the box. So box office was critical and yeah. theaters were like, please keep your movies coming to our studios because to our buildings, because you, we know you can put it on streaming. And that was a big thing happening right before this was the whole thing with universal and trolls. And yeah. that was already happening. And uh, COVID just accelerated that like, well, screw it. We'll just put it on VOD. And then that whole, that whole thing was, was a huge, a huge thing. And I think that we would have gotten to a place where we've got, we've got, more and more movies playing earlier and earlier in the week, more and more screenings packed in into more and more screens and more and more teenagers who are not going to get more and more money to work more and more hours to service all of those. And so what was going to happen was quality was going to go down and yeah, you make money. People are going into the theaters because you're giving them these opportunities, but ultimately that would have, that would have accelerated slightly the idea that this sucks. (laughs) I don't, don't, this, this is an ordeal. I have to wait in line forever and the food sucks and I and I can't bring water in and there's kids here and it's late and it's a the people work beside night. me are annoying yeah and so like so the studios get what they want but not really because this is where we try to cross over. We always try to be altruistic and idealistic about this experience where it's like, yeah great the business goal is achieved asses and seats money and money and wallets. That's great. But for us, the consumer and for the general idea of how this should go, best case is you have a dip in quality and 
you're making money, but people are having less fun at the theaters and they're going to stop yeah. coming. And that's what yeah. was, that's worth where we were when COVID hit was we were shoving these movies into, into the cinemas. And we were, we, that we, the theaters and the, and the studios were like, we, they've got opening weekend, like jobs are on the line based on that. And it's just, yeah. it's, it's bananas. And so at least what's happened, hopefully in the past few months is no one's gotten fired because a movie's performed poorly in the box office because the box office is irrelevant right now. Mm-hmm. or it's still so relevant you can't open your film like bond they were like this film needs to be seen by an audience in a movie theater and it's like again there's a there's double side oh because you need to make the money but also because you believe this should be seen in front of a, a, a live audience and the live you know mm-hmm. an audience yeah. and yeah. and and so but when, when you're only measure for success is that experience it becomes hard to to accept any other way of it going down Right. Yeah. And, and I think, I think to speak to the decline of quality, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's this thing, like if you go to the theater, like proper, like to a live show and, and you are acting a fool in the, in the theater, like there are ushers that will come and escort you out. Yeah. There's somebody who will be like, I'm sorry, you're causing a disruption. You need to leave. Yeah. But but we've gotten to a point in, in the movie theaters where like we don't we don't treat it with that level of respect. And so so it just adds to like the the you know, it just adds to the decline of the experience. Because anybody can go in there, any you know, fifteen year old who had twelve dollars on their you know, on their person and that's all the money they have their name, and they just needed something to do and mom just dropped them off. Yeah. Like that and then they just get in there and they act like crazy and there's nobody who can say, I'm so sorry, you need to leave yeah. and you're not getting your money back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it just, you know, it, it, it promotes that because there's no, there's no ramifications for ill behaved people. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's a thing they're, but they're going to have to, they're going to have to change when they come back. And I hope they realize that, um, I'm, I'm not holding my breath, but you know, I'm a big proponent of seeing films with an audience on mm-hmm. a big screen. That's the only way the filmmaker can can guarantee their film is being exhibited properly, even though a lot of times it is in any way, um, which is a whole nother problem. Mm-hmm. But but that you know that experience should be preserved, and so in 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 preserving it, we're going to have to change it. Or else yeah. we're gonna lose it. And so anyway, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm eager to see what happens. The problem with scaling like they did with movie theaters is quality control. Any businesses, yeah. when you scale fast, the problem is the problem is quality control. And yeah. they, they couldn't control the quality anymore. They're hiring teenagers to to oversee these things and make sure there's quality, and they're probably not giving them the tools or the motivation to to care about it. Whereas a place like the Crescent Theater in Mobile is run by a guy who's passionate about film. Mm-hmm. and who wants to present you a quality screening and wants to talk to you about the film. And I really want to try to get him on the podcast, to be honest. Um, yeah, if yeah. anybody listening knows Max Mori, tell him I want to interview him. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but I, so there, that's one end of the spectrum and Max shows like, a, a, you know, films that are, you know, wide release films that were kind of lesser known. Sometimes they'll show an anniversary screening. Like he's, he is the, the quintessential local cinema one mm-hmm. screen you know, and, 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 and an art and an artistically minded person picks what we're watching. And then you have the Nexus in Westmobile, which is more commercial, but still small run. And it has two screens and a bar upstairs with a trivia night, diversifying of, of business business model, uh, great food, great drinks, um, really convenient service and, Mm -hmm. um, a really nice cinema experience. And, um, and, and their overhead is probably much lower than that of, 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 of Regal, you know, yeah. and they probably pay their employees better and the tickets are a little pricier, but you get a way better experience. And, and the, whenever I think of going to the movies, the first place I think of is Nexus, because that's the last time I had a good time at the movies. Mm-hmm.